watching iRacing on the Ghostfire Media Network. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Adam Wood. My co-host tonight is Josh Laston, and we are Ghostfire Media. How are you doing tonight, Josh? You know what? I'm doing great. I'm excited to watch these guys try to tame the Lady in Black tonight. Darlington is one of my favorite tracks to watch. Definitely not one of my favorite tracks to run. Uh, yes, uh, Darlington is called the Lady in Black for a reason. Uh, I always end up uh, having at least one or two black stripes, usually coming from turns three and four here. Uh, yeah, it's not not one of my favorite tracks. No, it is definitely, it has earned its reputation as one of the most difficult tracks on the calendar because it's asymmetrical, it's fast, and I'm having a feeling that we are only going to have a single line tonight. Yeah, I, for me, whenever I look at Darlington, you have turns one and two is your your smaller corner, your fast-paced corner, and that's not the corner I want to uh, be trying to make the pass on. It's three and four. You have you can get two cars wide there. You can drop down to that white line and try to drive underneath them, but one and two, I, to me, it's just too fast-paced to try to make a move there. No, Darlington, again, we're going to see... Some people are going to handle each turn differently to where I'm hopeful that that's not going to cause too many issues. But, again, this is a single groove track. These cars are at the... They're a step down from the cup car, but they act very similar to the cup car here. So, I have a feeling... Like you said, we're going to see a lot of the Darlington stripe on these cars tonight. Exactly. I, these guys are going to have a lot and a lot of handling issues. Uh, when the tires wear, they're going to have to feather the throttle through three and four. And I mean, you you let off and you just think, man, did I did I let off too long? Am I going to get beat by the next guy? And you throttle it up and then you, f you realize... Man, I throttled it up too soon. I'm about to hit the wall. Yeah, it's... Like I said, it is going to be some great racing tonight. It always is going to bring excitement because we are going to see some guys get really brave down trying to hold that low line, especially through one and two because it's a little bit faster. There's a little bit more room there to make moves and... I, it's the only place that I have found on this track that you're actually going to be able to get a pass done. Yeah, I'm trying to just go through some of these paint schemes right now. We're on Tyler Hensley. He's out there. That's a, as everybody knows, Darlington's known as the throwback weekend. You know, it started back quite a few years ago with NASCAR that everybody goes out there. So tonight you're going to see uh, unusual paint schemes that you're, from what you're used to with these guys. They're all throwing back to a different genre, different driver. So it's good to see uh, the different ones out here. I believe this one was uh, a Jimmy Johnson throwback. Yeah, these are... This league has some of the best paint schemes that I have experienced in iRacing. And it really does come down to the fact that you, well, you have to get a paint scheme. 
But at the end of the day, it makes for a great presentation and all these, most everyone, because unfortunately I'm seeing a few people out on track that are still running their same schemes, but at the same time, we've my camera just went to the same one that you're on and Thomas Bressi and that Jeff Gordon throwback. Again, we're just going to see a lot of people throwing back to their favorite drivers and some of the most iconic schemes that you've seen in NASCAR. Yeah, I mean, uh, most of them that you look at tonight are going to be iconic. So uh, it's going to be great to see out there. Let's look at Brian Keita's car out here. Okay, so I think this might be like the old Kmart logo. It is. And I love the fact that they uh, modified it ever so slightly to fit the team but again that's a I love the old school liveries from any kind of racing back when you had to paint it by hand and you couldn't just print graphics on some vinyl and slap it on there yeah it, it made it more interesting and actually like you know uh, more worthwhile back in the day to watch when they did those things because I mean it took skill now it's like all right, you got, you know, some graphic designer that went to school and he just prints something. All right, go through it. Put it on the car. Does it look good? Yep. All right, send it out. I mean, they have the same tools that we have for iRacing, trying to make these things look good to where you can quite literally make changes to your paint and nearly instantly see what it looks like. And unfortunately, I've spent far too many hours building out paint schemes to try to make it look as good as possible. Yeah, it, it's one of those things that, you know, it's, it's a love-hate relationship whenever you're building paints here on iRacing to go out there. Uh, you want it to look good, but then you get so aggravated when it just doesn't come out just perfectly and you have to basically, like, start all over. And, uh, yeah, I, you know, some of these guys out here have really good talent and, and, and it's showing. Well, I was going to say, one of our sponsors with of the league, Elwood Designs, Alan runs in the series and he's done so he's actually done many of the paints that you'll paint schemes you'll see tonight also cameron hearn he's gonna go with the folgers that's a different line all oh, right yeah <laughs> well that was the perfect time to come and watch him <laughs> and he's around and he's probably not gonna be excited but i mean he's just running that turtle line right now just staying on his lid and unable to flip himself over. Yeah. It's kind of like the opposite of what happened to Austin Dillon on Saturday night. He got uh, stuck there on the apron on transition. So... Well, he's reset, but we probably still have about another minute. Ooh, we do have another person out on track right now trying Steve, to get his lap Steve Rada's out here now. That's a beautiful 0-3. And as he slaps the wall, he's already got his first Darlington strike during qualifying. Well, and if I was him, knowing that he was out on his outlap, that was the time to go ahead and throw reset, on man. the brakes and reset. Unless he's pushing time, which, in that case, I understand why he's just running anyway. I'm going to apologize for any of the viewers out there. Apparently my cat's hungry and he doesn't realize that it's not food time yet. They, they don't ever realize that, that food time's food o'clock 24-7 for them. Yeah, they just don't have this nice raspy meow that I really don't want to listen to right now. But we are seeing some, in all honesty, the Ooh. top 20 times. Yeah, that's... uh. That is definitely not how you want to spend your second lap there, but he did get his time set down, but of the guys that have put in a lap, he is at the back, but getting the wall inside of three and four on your outlap is going to suck any speed out as the same exact thing. If you can't get your second lap done, you're in trouble for the rest of the lap yeah as of right now we don't have anybody else out there we'll we'll post up the results whenever it gets to it so um, before we get to the end here let's uh 
go ahead down it. So tonight is going to be Darlington. It's the race number six in the Fuel uh, 2021 B Jeff Hill Trailer Series. Uh, right now, the temperature outside is 81 degrees, but that track temperature is a monster. It's at 124 degrees right now. So I'm trying to figure out who will tame the lady in black tonight. And honestly, right now, I don't know if it's we're waiting. Yeah, we still got a little bit. Right now, Shane Theron is currently sitting at or is our pole sitter with Alan Elwood right behind him. And we're talking only oh, there eight. we go. And there it is. So let me All righty, so here's the grid. Starting in first position will be Shane Theron. So starting in second is Alan Elwood. Third is Cameron Hearn. Fourth is Thomas Bressy the third. Fifth is Danny Ware. Sixth is Michael Stroll. Seventh is Tyler Hensley. Eighth is Justin Morton. Ninth is Randy Bichel. And tenth is Blake Gordon. And... Casey Shue is in 11th, Hayden Pistorius in 12th, Joe Dinsmore 13th, Norm Peltier is in 14th, I'm hoping I got that right, Delonta Ballard is 15th, Brad Slaughter Jr. 16th, Davey Hendricks 17th, Zach Edwards 18th, Blake Zidi is in 19th, Bootmer Logan is in 20th, 21st and, is Brandon Bernhardt. 22nd is Sean Carmody. 23rd is John Doble. 24th is Brian Keita. 25th is Kyle Cooper. 26th is Steven Rada. Uh, 27th is Eric Wineland. 28th is Chad Maz Oh, man. You know how to say that? <laughs> I don't build your own. Because? Because. Uh, I'm going to uh, just take a yeah, stab. And 29th is Gail Brooks. And 30th is Chris Matthews. And in 31st is John Griven. 32nd is Carl Henderson. And I got real confused because his number is 31. <laughs> uh, 33rd is Cal Filarski. 34 is Tyler Dolger. 35th is Nick Adams. 36th is Don Runkle Jr. And 37th and rounding out the field is David Mott Jr., all righty. That's right. Shane Theron got the Elwood Pole Award for this week. El uh, Alan Elwood tried to get it for two weeks in a row, was not able to. So that's kind of like... Well, uh, taking your namesake award, I, th I feel like it would have a little bit of extra credence with you if you could... Well, it also may be him just patting himself on the back in that process. Yeah. So, as we go through the night, uh, once we get started, uh, we'll, we'll start cycling through the field so you can guys see all your favorite drivers out there that uh, are going to be able to see their paint schemes for the night for this uh, wonderful throwback. Yeah, I, I'm real excited to see some of the ones that we haven't had the opportunity to see yet. And honestly, the one that made me laugh the most was... In all honesty, the painful reminder that Taco Bell has been around for too long in Blake <laughs> Gordon. Oh, man. You drive through certain towns and you have uh, different Taco Bells. Like I, in my hometown, when I just visited, uh, they got these new state-of-the-art Taco Bells. And, you know, I've been out Fort Bliss and they got the old school Taco Bells. And, uh, you know, I love seeing the older ones. Like McDonald's, you don't see any older ones anymore. They're all renovated at least to like, you know, mid-2000s. There's no more jungle gyms outside that you might need uh, your tetanus shot for. I've still got one of those in my area. and Luckily, it hasn't been open for a while, but I love seeing old or new restaurants being in old Taco Bell buildings that they didn't renovate or old Pizza Huts. Yeah. Yeah, that or, you know, you just see any, like, you know, really identifiable restaurant. Uh, like, I, I think I said on another broadcast, uh, 
PDQs by me uh, in Fayetteville, North Carolina, and they turned that into a veterinary clinic. So that was really different. <laughs> I don't know what that is. It's a My chicken. Ohio it, it's, self. A, it's a chicken restaurant. So it, I think before that it was a, probably a burger restaurant, but now it's a veterinary hospital. I don't know how people take uh, that and make it into a veterinary hospital, but they did. And I'll shut up about the food. Well, the pace car is off. The 38 Shane Theron will take him to the green flag. Green flag is out. Shane gets a heck of a jump over Alan Elwood. He will go in and turn one uncontested. Alan Elwood drops back to second and third. It's going to be Cameron Hearn. Fourth is Thomas Bressy. Fifth is going to be Michael Stroll. These guys are fighting hard. They all start in a single file, though. Everybody looks like they just dipped down to stay in that single file to make it through turns one and two. Oh, we've got a few people. Blake Gordon is actually too wide going into turn three and fighting off Randy Bechtel and coming out. Looks like they're getting themselves straightened out, but we've basically gone single file the whole way back. Yeah, right now everybody looks kind of like they're stretched out here. Uh, trying to ride. We got 182 laps tonight. So they ha they're they going to have a long time. Yeah, this is not going to be a short race. And we're going to definitely see a lot of guys. Ooh, Joe Densmore just got booted up in the wall by Delonte Ballard. They were side by side in three and four. And they made contact. Joe just hit the wall. He's got probably some major damage from that. Honestly, I think... He should be fine. We've seen Joe Densmore in certain races basically crab walk it to a podium. And you know what? It's early, which is very unfortunate for him. But it, again, I'm just going to say it's early. We're three laps into 182. So these guys, hopefully it seems like it. we aren't going to have any chaos to start. We're definitely going to be waiting until a little deeper into the race before people start getting aggressive. Yeah, I, I think everybody's trying to fill out. Ooh, they got one really sideways right there. Looked like it was Hayden Pastoris right there. Got a little loose coming off of turn two, dropped it down low. Was able to regain himself, didn't lose his spot there. So. And according to my time and, timing and scoring, and our uh, podcast guest, the lone Canadian in the field tonight. And, all right, I need to stop when we're going to feel there's far too many uh, throwbacks to beer companies now that they aren't allowed to be in NASCAR anymore. It's making me want some, especially that course car right there. Yeah, you know, I always like the Bill Elliott like throwback scheme. Uh, it's one of the gr great ones that you kind of see on see that out there these days. Uh, when I race involved back the late '80s, Thunderbird, and them, you know, they they brought back this paint scheme, and it was you know it looked fantastic. And the I racing trailer that they did for it uh, for the Bill Elliott chasing uh, Dale Earnhardt's Good Wrench car, I mean, they made it look fantastic. And especially with Dale, those are the iconic cars of that era. And especially seeing that black good wrench car. Unfortunately, when you go to any of the iRacing officials, you're going to guaranteed see one. It's either that or a junior car. That you're guaranteed to see one of those two paint schemes during an official race. But right now just looking through the field there's very few people looking to get aggressive to where there's not too many people under very small intervals as I just sit there and watch Sean Carmody gets a great run on Boomer Logan and gets around to where now we've got a line of three Endeavor cars running around trying to get around that STP car of Joe Dinsmore. Yeah, Guy Old Brooks just made a good pass on Boomer Logan there at number 85. So, yeah. Guy Old Brooks is like he's figured this track out. He's got a 
couple passes underneath his belt. He's up 10 spots since the beginning. But right now, he is our biggest mover. Uh, biggest dropper right now is Tyler Hensley. He's dropped, actually, uh, I take that back, Justin Morton is. He dropped back 27 spots so far. Well, and again, there is the Rhino Hard Charger Award that goes to the car that makes up the most spots from the start to where some people, like myself, that's the only award that I can hope to win in this <laughs> league. I mean, any type of award that you can, though, get from this league is going to be fantastic. I mean, driving through the field and being the hard charger is an accomplishment and a feat of its own here. Uh, you know, but still saying you, you started 23rd and drove up the, you know, 15th, 8th, you know, 12th or something like that. I mean, that's your, that's probably going to be... Uh, caution is out. Well, they're blinking oh. out on each other. They're both blinked out. A little bit of blinking action there. And that's one of the unfortunate things oh, about... Good. Oh, I think that was unfortunately just on you there, but in all honesty, you got the picture. Nick Adams came a little bit hot down low because Tyler rode a, slid a little bit high in the corner, and yeah, Nick just wasn't prepared for him to bounce off the wall like he did, and Right now, I'm watching Nick Adams try to limp his way back to the pits, but we're 12 laps in, and we have our first caution, and it was unfortunately someone getting a clip of the wall, and if someone's below you, there's not much you can do. Yeah. Let's go ahead and uh, run, run those beautiful ads. That was the beautiful Rhino ad. I really love it. Uh, I wish I had something that I could use that with because uh, those actually look very dependable and sturdy uh, straps and tie downs that they, these guys offer. I, I own I, none of those equipment. <laughs> we're actually looking for getting them at my building because uh, there are certain people that plow when the wonderful winter weather hits in Northeast Ohio that um, we've gotten our dump truck stuck because we use it to plow and we need something to be able to pull them out. Yeah, I'm, We've used the backhoe more times than I care to admit to. The only place I actually enjoyed snow was when I lived up in Maryland. Um, I, you could have snow. It could be there for a couple of days. It could be there just overnight. Uh, they maintain the roads really well. I, even my private roads. Uh, yeah, everywhere else I ever have been, they never have any crap. Uh, they never have any service, and it's always crappy. Like in North Carolina, and especially when I came here to Texas, they don't know what to deal with snow. They didn't have anything. There's no salt. They throw sand down and some other crap. Uh, I can't help but laugh a little bit when the snow hit Texas this past year. But at the same time, I have family in the area, and they were... Luckily, Virginia natives, so they knew exactly what they were doing. 
but the stories of them having to teach people how to use an ice scraper were actually kind of uh, man so i i have a dodge charger with some really nice summer slick tires it did not like snow period and the roads here are already for some reason already slick like uh just regular acceleration if my tire want to break loose and trying to be out there and make it probably about almost a mile in the snow here just to get some food from my hotel room because I just got here like two days before it snowed and uh, it was a tremendous feat to try to get my charger to do that. Yeah, <laughs> but as we are one to go, we haven't had our, any kind of a shakeup in the first two positions. Basically, we haven't had any shakeups down to seventh at this point. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, there was a little bit here and there, but I think they got their spots back throughout this time period. So, you know, we're going to we're going to see exactly what happens here on this restart. Will they all try to get single file before going in turn one or will they somebody chance it? I have a feeling we're going to see someone chance it and they go green. He gets a great jump. They were middle of turn four. Shane Theron jumps out early. Alan Elwood got caught sleeping. Thomas Bressy right now. He's going to go by him, take that second spot. That was the best thing that he could have done was just get himself moving, get that gap, because now, while he does have a little bit of pressure behind him, he's got smooth sailing for a little, for quite a while. Yeah, you just got to worry about hitting your marks, you know. Uh, that's a fresh restart on 17 lap old tires. So you got to understand that when you go in, it's not going to be like your very first restart. So these guys are have to be patient here. Well, and again, we're 17 laps into 182. As they cross the stripe, we're 10% into this race. And they've just got to take it easy. Tires are going to be limited tonight, so you're going to have to run the entire distance of a tank, most likely, to be able to have fresh tires for the end of this race. And right now we got uh, Delonte Ballard taking over the spot from Casey Shoe there. That was a battle for ninth place. He got a great run out of turn two, was able to meet, uh, pass him before they got into turn three. So that was a great move by Delonte Ballard. Well, and again, we've said it already. This is not an easy track to pass at. Yeah. And you've got to throw, you have to make what some may end up considering a questionable move here and there just because you may not have the opportunity at all going forward. Yeah, I mean, you're going to have to make the, find where you can make the move. Like right now, you see the 28 of David, Davey Hendricks, like, get a great run through middle of turn two. Uh, it looks like Casey Shoe kind of backed off just a little bit to allow him to go in there. You got to be able to sling your car in there, but you got to, you don't do that hardly off that often there. So you got to make sure you back off before you slap the outside wall there and ruin, ruin that beautiful Skittles car. Yeah. And again, there's too many food and too many beer cars out there to where I'm hungry now. But <laughs> if we, is it, is it, is it, what car is it? Circle Jerks? Uh, I do believe... I. There's part of me that wants to say that that's in reference to the band, but I haven't been able to confirm that yet. Yep, Circle but, Jerks. So, yes. Like I said, there's part of me that thinks that may be in reference to the old-school punk band, but at the same time, it also would fit for a an oval racing team. Oh, as we're going through, I mean, we the field's kind of spread out, so to speak. There's small battles here and there. I'm just trying to take you through the field right now and uh, see everybody beautiful throwback paints right now. Let's see if Chad's got the Valvoline paint. Yeah, that's unfortunately many of my childhood memories surrounding NASCAR are with that scheme, so I'm very much partial to it. Uh, uh, Justin Anderson has raced long enough. You can go get some Taco Bell or Pizza Hut and be back in time to call uh, the last 150 laps. I don't know. If, I, 
I don't know about you, but my Taco Bell experience has not been that way. My Taco Bell experience in the past like year and a half, actually longer than that, for some reason it takes so long to put that artificial meat into a burrito. It's not artificial, it's just not a very high quality. And we are definitely never going to get Taco Bell as a sponsor now. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, darn! I told uh, I told Blake uh, last week that uh, he he had a dual sponsorship between Taco Bell and Scott's Toilet Paper. I mean, it is very much a match made in heaven. Yeah, when I when I mention Taco Bell, it normally turns into Taco Hell. That's uh, kind of where it, it leads me about, you know, 60, 70 percent of the time. Honestly, I I apparently have a stomach of steel. Oh, as we go to the front right now, we have a challenge for the lead. To where Thomas Baresi is down below Shane Theron. Yeah, Thomas Baresi's going to have to clear him here. Uh, Alan, Alan actually backs off because I was uh, expecting Alan Elwood right there to uh, jump try to jump in behind him and uh, squeeze him out. But no, he let him back in line going into turn two. And honestly, that is, it was a brave move to try to get one down below someone where he did. Sometimes if you manage that run out of turn three, you're able to make that pass uh, to get underneath him coming out of the turn four down the front stretch there. Uh, you can do it, but most of your runs come out of turn two here. Well, and that's the big thing is coming out of turn four takes a lot more throttle control than coming out of two to where if somebody has even the slightest bobble, because if you're following that closely, you can see if their back end decides to kick out ever so slightly. So you know you have that opportunity and any kind of extra speed going into the front stretch, you're going to get a little bit of a draft that'll get you a little more acceleration to where you can have your car about halfway below them before you're entering one. And one thing I would love to see iRacing actually do is put the actual racing line on here that NASCAR gets to use. NASCAR drops well below those lines uh, on Saturdays and Sundays here at Darlington. And you're able to use more of the racetrack, you know, one and two, not so much or not, not too many people go below the dotted white line that you see there. But there are some that are able to make it like drive down two lanes lower than what we're able to run here. See, nobody goes near that white dotted white line here in three and four. But on sun Saturdays and Sundays, you believe them, they're able to drive underneath there and make it stick. Well, and I think that's the big thing is iRacing will let you do it. You're just not going to be able to do it well. I, you can't do it to maintain speed. That's what I'm getting at. We need to get the physics models out there and updated so we can actually make it a viable lane for us. Well, we, we could sit here and wish all day. <laughs> It'd make for better a action here between three and four, in my opinion, because you'd have a whole other lane that you kind of short shoot to try to get a better run off the corner uh, and better to dive in deep underneath them and pass somebody. So that's what I, I hope for. Well, as I look a little farther back in the field, the closest battle that we have right now is Joe Dinsmore trying to make it, make it up to Casey Shoe. And I'm watching him dive up and down and right now he made a little mistake as we looks like we may have actually had an incident but it did not bring out the caution yeah it looks like don Jr. crashed and jumped into the pitch right away so what happened with that well he's running with no uh bumper there and that's a great camera angle and he just smacks the inside wall and says i'm done well, he's off yeah. the track, so. And that's unfortunate, and I'm also going to be completely honest. I'm surprised we haven't seen a little bit more of that. I think, you know, when we're, we're watching through in practice, I mean, you have some people doing long-term run, long-term tire tests here, 
And you got a lot of them you know, pushing the envelope to get every tenth and every thousandth of a second uh, out of these cars. And when you do that, you're pushing them on the edge. You, know, you see a lot of self spins during practice, and you think it's going to kind of carry over to the actual race, but it doesn't. As we got. Oh, and a lot of people, and I'm included in this, to where, yeah, you'll do that long tire run. But at the same time, I'll go out there and push the car to absolute limits so I know where those absolute limits are. And then I go about 5% below that for the race. And, and you can't run those uh, balls to the wall lap every lap. I mean, you got to learn what your car can do at lap 1, lap 15, lap 30, lap 45 to be able to understand, you know, what are you able to do as uh, Eric Wineland started to move through the field here? Uh, that, that's the second position that I've seen him doing. He's up 12 positions. Guile, he passed Guyel Brooks, who's up 13. And then uh, two spots ahead. Actually, now three spots ahead of him right now. It's the, our biggest hard charger. Is, uh, I'm just calling him Chad, number 25. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was waiting for that one. <laughs> just Chad. Matt, it, it, Chad, if you go back and watch this, we'll probably reach out to oh, you. We have another incident. Blake Zedi, he jumped in the pits too. Let's uh, do that. Um, <laughs> Chad, just reach out to us. Uh, figure out exactly what's going on with your name. I, we do not want to butcher it up here. He gets super loose coming off the corner, smacks it, turns himself around. I mean, he could have saved that one. Uh, I don't know why he, why he decided to jump in the pits and tow it. Now he's gonna be like at least 10 laps down with that toe. Well, he also put the front end into the wall, and unfortunately, that's probably going to cause some radiator damage, especially here. Is... Oh, he loved going around, going to the different people. Is Eric Wineland actually just got around Joe Dinsmore to take over 14th and put himself up now 13th 13 positions. Yeah, we're, we're seeing Eric Wineland come alive. Uh, Chad, Chad's coming alive. He's up 16 spots, as we said. Another one is uh, John Gervon. And it's number 33. I, let's get, get a little closer look at that one. Oh, the old school Pepsi. I miss that logo. I don't like all the new ones. And that's the I logo right there. Getting old. That that's the logo right there that you would get whenever uh, you're like, "Come on, can I get a free twenty ounce? Give me a free twenty ounce." Yeah, that. Those are all the again. This is why I also love watching Darlington a lot. Is again, you get to see all of the throwback the nostalgia i'm not normally a nostalgia person but again this takes me back to the early days as we have caution yeah, there's quite a few right here oh uh, i'm not sure what happened but yeah we've got two brian kita hits the outside wall hits the 14 hits carl henderson as well stops in the middle of the track Starts creeping up the track here. And that's not banking and that then, you're going to be able to do that. Oh, that's what happened to Allen. Allen Elwood hits him as they passed him. So let's try to see if we can get a blimp view here before this happens. Oh. Allen smacks the wall to try to get as high as possible, which then forces him down. Let me try to take another look at that. I need a different angle yeah. here. Yeah, those... That banking is far too steep for a stagnant car to be able to get any kind of traction. And, he, I mean, look at the timing. Uh, he literally escaped out of the car right as he hit him. Yeah, that's... That is the... Well, then, that could have actually have been less because of his car well it's because his car there but he may not have actually hit the car it may have just been him hitting the wall at the speed he did he lost traction as yeah the entire field is in the pits all right while we listen to this or while you guys watch these guys do a pit stop here we'll go ahead and take another uh 
commercial break. Hi everybody, this is Stu Rickard and I'm part of RPM Missions and our cause is to raise awareness for human trafficking here in the United States where currently we have over 300,000 people trapped in slavery and of that at least 30% are of little boys and girls under the age of 18. Our goal at RPM Missions is threefold. We would like to see 10,000 people put this human trafficking hotline number into their cell phones so that they can feel deputized and to report suspicious activities when they see it. Our second goal is to raise awareness for more recovery homes that need to be built for these girls and boys that have been rescued from sex trafficking. And the third goal is for folks sitting on the couch, maybe watching this video, to get up and to uh, get energized, to uh, serve others, and to uh, feel the blessing that comes with that. Thank you so much for uh, listening to this video. We thank you so much for visiting our website. And we ask that maybe for your social media circles, you'll help us spread that word. You'll help us stop the bad guys from exploiting our children sexually, mentally, and physically. Thank you. Alrighty, we are back. And you see everybody goes through. Uh, the O3 is getting a wave around. He's sitting in front of the leader, so we'll run through the top 10 for everybody. So, number one uh, should be Shane Theron. Number two is Thomas Bresti. Number three is Cameron Hearn. Fourth is Michael Stroll. Fifth is Blake Gordon. Sixth is Randy Bachel. Uh, seventh is Davey Hendricks. Eighth is Hayden Pastoris. Ninth is Chad, and tenth is Joe Densmore. So it was like Joe Densmore. I mean, uh, he didn't. He has not came back in to get some of that work done. So it must not be affecting his car too much. Well, and that's one of the few good things about Darlington is, well, it's not a short track. It basically is going to require the arrow of a short track. So he's not going to have too much of a negative impact it's annoying but at the same time it's not going to be a race ender yep all right uh we are one to go here we'll be going lap uh going green on lap 43 uh so let me lap 43 of 182 laps hey we're over a fifth of the way there we're getting there. We got a long night, man. Right now. Well, and it's a right now, like just about every other race with this league. Everybody's settling in, but there's still a lot of good racing going on throughout the pack. Yeah, everybody's learning, you know, how to deal with older tires and how to how to manage them. So. Uh, this is going to be their second attempt to try to manage it as the pace car pulls off. Shane will bring him up. Green flag drops. Shane gets a heck of a run. Uh, Cameron Hearn follows right behind him. He's going to take over that second spot for Thomas Bressy there as they dive in turn one. Everybody's kind of single file. There's a little bit of du double file back here. Looks like they kind of straightened it out. Everybody's went back single files. They come out of turn two. I will be honest, I was kind of rooting for Cameron Hearn in that Folgers car to try to get himself down below Shane Theron just for a little bit of first lap excitement. Yeah, we got, we got Joe Dinsmore. We're going side by side right here through three and four. Looks like he, his attempt failed and was able to, has to be pushed back just a little bit. Casey Shue in that number four, kind of looking at him to see if he can make a move. Well, and it's going to be we're 44 laps in it's the patience and what happened there I, I hit him as they were he made the pass on him as you can tell Michael Stroll got in a little bit of a uh, contact on the last one he's got a little bit of front damage Blake Gordon will pass him going into turn two that was a great run coming out of four to get that spot, move himself up into fourth, and he's he's if, moved up six spots at this point. I, I'm wondering if uh, that damage is hindering him because uh, they're gaining him on the straightaways here. 
Well, and that's... I mean, I don't think it would be that bad. But right now, Shane has just decided to open up a gap. Yeah. To where he's well over a half a second up front right now. Hey, you have to, you know, kind of pace yourself. You can't get too far out there and wear out your tires. It, you know, it's a great feeling to be out front and to have that pace and that speed. But at the same time, are you wearing your equipment out too soon on these long green flag runs that these guys are going to have? Well, and my theory on this is, and it's come back to bite me once or twice or five times, it's use your equipment during those best laps in the good years get yourself just out of that draft range and then pull back and yeah. he looks like he may have had the opportunity to do that and I would say that the draft is probably most effective if you're under three quarters of a second and he's just flirting with the edge of that we just saw uh, Brad Slaughter Jr. take the spot right there, the 13th spot away from Joe Densmore. And, again, another one of those great moves that, in all honesty, that's... We're starting to see this mid-pack really heat up at this point as Casey Shue. Oh, that's Eric Wineland. Sorry, yeah. I'm still... Eric Wineland, he, he's finding his uh, rhythm here. He's picking up some more spots here as uh, they go green. Chad's in front of him. He's uh, the biggest mover. Eric is the second big, actually, Gael Brooks behind him. So the biggest movers are all together right there. Uh, Chad, well, Eric, and, and Gael. Those are the people that I'm going to want to be around because obviously they have made some moves. They are the ones that know how to get the pass done, and I'm wanting to learn from them. Yeah, Eric Wineland looked pretty low right there underneath uh, Chad going into turn one. Thought something different. He's getting a heck of a run. Will he do something with it? Yes, he will. He looks slow, and he backs off. He's showing him that he's there, but he couldn't make that pass going into turn three like that. Well, and again, that's one of those places that it's not easy to make the pass. If I'm in his shoes... I know I'm faster. He keeps losing out trying to make the pass. What you do is make sure you have a nice, comfortable gap coming out, going into turn three. Wait, get the great run out of four and try to make the move in one and two. Yeah, you know, there's the art to passing here. Uh, and you got to remember which corner that you're attacking him on because each corner has way different braking tendencies and drive lines. Uh, turn three you want to back it off and you're taking a center a center corner entry whereas turn one you're going to have a lower uh, turn one entry to make the car stick and to behave the way you want it to yeah turns one and two you kind of have to diamond it to where you go in low kind of rise up in the middle of the corner and then come back low whereas three and four you're pretty much in that high line the whole time as of right now, we're not missing up anything up front. Yeah, right now, about a half a second lead between the first and the second, and almost four tenths of a uh, gap between second and third. And it's kind of how it stays back there. It goes between a half a second or more all the way back through. The best, the best battle right now, though, on the track is these, this group right here. Oh, without a doubt, to where, like I said, we had a little bit of a hornet's nest brewing it. Michael Stroll right now, over. seeing Hayden Pistorius get his nose down, get a move done, but he is not out of the reach of Eric Wineland. Oh, no. Eric Wineland's already got past uh, Chad, and he's going to drive down low underneath uh, Hayden Pistorius right now. And that's, that's a brave place to where... Hayden's going to get a great run coming out of the corner because he gets to carry a little bit more speed. And now he has the opportunity to chop some noses off and keep him behind. But I have a feeling this little battle is going to keep going. Yeah, he had, you know, 
uh, Eric Wineland had a feather of the throttle right there coming off a of turn four, not to get him. That's why Hayden Pastoris got a great launch there. He was able to use all that top momentum coming off the corner to really get by him. That time, and that was a great move that he just did. Block the low line throughout the turn so he can't get down below him and make sure that he gets up to that wall to block any kind of a run that Eric Wineland may have had. Yeah, Eric Wineland, it uh, looks like he's trying to find a good rhythm going, th going into it. He's taking a little bit of higher approach here to see if he can keep more momentum coming out of it and kind of beat him back to the throttle coming off of four. It just, and just can't do it's it. It's the right move. And right now, those guys in the battle that they have been going on there has let Davey Hendricks just pull away from them. Oh, I don't have a chance for you. I, I love this. <laughs> Look at the dashboard. Look at the stick figure guy, guy waving at us. I have never seen that. I absolutely love it. So as you can see, as he hit turn one, you have the little spot down there. You really have to hit that little bottom spot to be able to uh, really make the car arc the way you want to and dive in the corner properly. And turn to three, you just basically drop the throttle, let the car float up, and then slowly get back on the throttle here like as you hear on. And then he puts it full throttle as he basically gets the car pointed straight. Here he'll lift going into turn one. He'll hit this little bottom spot, which is, propels his car to the top. You give it a little bit of juice. It starts to wiggle on you. You feather it all the way throughout it. And as you straighten that car up, you just take off. And yeah, that is the perfect line through those corners. I... I me personally, I like driving just a little bit lower in turn one. I feel like I, it really helps me stay off the wall and I'm able to push it the car just a little bit harder than uh, what I can without hitting it. But I mean, he, he's doing it perfectly though for, you know, the way it's supposed to be run. Well, and I'll, I'll be the first to admit that I like hitting the outsides of walls when I shouldn't be, but again, it's running on the ragged edge and that's what these guys are doing. Ooh, and un Ooh, we are seeing some spicy action up here for the in the battle for second. Cameron Hearn is not wanting to be patient behind Thomas Baresi. And judging by this, if he can get around him, Shane Theron is going to have his hands full because He's definitely showing speed, being able to make that pass happen. Yeah, right now, you know, he's going to have his hands full of Blake right now. Blake Gordon uh, has beat him almost every single lap by almost a tenth. So, Bressy, Bressy is slowing down just a little bit, and Blake Gordon's picking it up. Well, he's unfortunately falling victim to one of the things that I have done far too many times, and that's run just a little bit too hard at the beginning and ultimately burn your tires up and it may not even be the wear they just may be a little bit too hot to where the Goodyears have just lost a little bit of their structure and it's going to give you a whole lot less grip unless he can possibly cool them down but with the pressure he's got behind him he's not going to have an opportunity yeah, it, it's not hard to overdrive the corner entries here on uh, in basically turn three. That's kind of where you're going to really overheat them the most because you have to let the car settle and rotate. And you have to wait for a while. So if you brake too hard coming into the corner because you, you drove it in a little bit too deep, you're going to heat up that tire way too much by having too much brake heat inside of it. Well, and as we're looking, we're in South Carolina at the end of August, that track temperature is scorching right now at 111 degrees. So that's not going to do any of these guys any favors with their tire temperature. 
Oh no, the, the track temperature here is uh, pretty high, very slick for these guys. This is a rough surface. It's eating these tires away lap after lap here. And uh, lap times are falling off uh, considerably, almost over, almost a second and a half over their best times right now. So, you know, as the, the run moves on and Thomas Bressy's in the wall, Blake Gordon's trying to capitalize off of it, but he cannot. Sometimes when you see a competitor in the wall, you let off the gas a little bit or you try to find a line to get by him. Sometimes you cannot. As Blake went into the corner just a little bit hot, you could see just a little bit of a back end slide as he collects it. But Blake's got to be just punching himself right now because that was His probably the best opportunity he's going to get for quite some time unless it happens again. But I don't see Thomas Bressy giving another just great chance to Blake Gordon. Yeah. Shane Theron, though, he's uh, he's still out there. Uh, he has about 1.3, almost 1.4 seconds now over Cameron Hearn. Cameron Hearn, uh, he's showing that he's fast, but did he use up his stuff trying to get by everybody there uh, and to keep pace for all these laps? Uh, or will he be able to start slowly reeling in our leader as uh, these laps start winding down here? Uh, not really winding, but uh, start clicking down. We're at lap 68 of 182 now. Well, as we're starting to see, some of the back of the field are looking to get into the pits, try something a little bit different that may be able to get them a little bit of a position as Blake Gordon gets the job done and has taken over third place. But yeah, we're going to start to see some people not count on those cautions coming out and start to make some strategic decisions. Yeah, you, got, you know, you're taking a gamble by doing that early pit stops. It, it can work out to your favor if the whole entire field goes green and it gets a full pit cycle. You know, if somebody wrecks in between the, that, I mean, you go a lap down here no matter what if you pit. So you're taking that gamble to go a lap down to have that fresher tires to start eating away at your competitors. Well, but again, it's just that gamble as we just had an incident that did not bring out a caution and that would have angered anybody that just went into the pits. This is Chad. Oh, he, oh, that's uh. Let's look at that from a different angle there. I don't know if he got got booted there or Yeah, he he definitely got the tip. It looks like he was chasing his car though. So I mean uh the eighty one's trying to do that. It looks like yeah, he's chasing his tire uh car. It looks like he can't he was loose coming off a of turn two there and uh he just chased his car and the eighty one was just too close to be able to check up in time and guy in the back bumpers lifted the tires and uh around she went. Well, and yeah, that's one of those unfortunate things that sometimes you have to be right there on the person's bumper. And there was definitely no malice Ooh, there. Oh, Blake Gordon's it's, around. Well, that was the worst time to come to that, but he holds on to it. And that's going to be a race wrecker right there. And that's real unfortunate. He was showing a lot of speed. Let's see what happened and to him to get to that point. I saw that they were at a close battle right there, so I swapped back to it. I just saw it as we were. That's a uh, tail tap right there. A tail right tap. Right there on the wall. And then as soon as he did it, he got back in the throttle a little bit too hard, and around she went. And, you know, Sometimes you do that. You, you you make a mistake. You see your competitors basically right on your back bumper. And then when you hit that throttle, you, you kind of hit it a little bit too much. You don't egg chill it enough. And uh, round she went. And that little incident drops Blake Gordon all the way back into 14th place after being. I think, I think he just hit the wall right there again uh, in the middle of one and two in front of uh, Joe and the... Uh, well, lot. and what that is, A, the slide, heated up the tires, 
well beyond anything that he has probably experienced at this point and one of my favorite things to do and he's probably also angry driving yeah he, he just pitted so he's going to go in four fresh tires we got alan elwood if you see him at the bottom he's just driving around collecting points as uh, if any competitor leaves and goes away or if there's a caution he's able to repair his car a little bit more underneath cautions you know. well and honestly until i started running with fuel i had never been in a league that didn't have fast repairs and one of the very first races and this is what carl like decides to bring up in the podcast constantly and did this past week because i wasn't there to defend myself is honestly people are going to end up rage quitting if they end up in an incident so he's got the right strategy he's not going to get massive points after that but he's going to have more laps than somebody that left let's say after the last incident yeah i mean as you go on you can click up you know seven eight nine positions depending on you know how many other people uh, wrecked out of the race and oh as we see the 28 skittles car here of uh, davy hendrick smack the wall he gets his first darlington stripe of the night you know wrinkles up that beautiful skittles car well at least it's still colorful just need a little bit of extra red on the side yeah and i mean you know this is one of those tracks where you know uh battle of nutrition happens here and uh, the track gets the best of you, and you, you don't race the competitors here, so to speak. Everybody says you got to race the track, and then while you're racing the track, you might pick up a spot or two from your competitors. Well, and that's exactly it. This is easily one of the most difficult tracks that anyone is going that this league is going to run, especially when it, we're talking about ovals. We've already run the most difficult track that we're going to run and fuel. And I never want to run Sebring again unless it has downforce. So our leader is in traffic now. How will this play towards this gap? He's got a, a two second lead. It was 1.4. It's up to two seconds. Let's see if he's able to navigate the traffic up here. Well, and everybody is gonna give the leader some extra space but as he's making his way around some of these cars are people that have made their way into the pits some of these people those that went into the pits recently it doesn't matter what the skill level is if you're on fresh tires you're gonna be faster than and this track is not that friendly, though, for the fresh tires. I mean, these guys are going to be running about almost two seconds faster than what the leader is going to be running. Trying to make your way and carve your way through this field on fresh tires is going to be a difficult chore for both for the personal fresh tires and the people who, you know, are going to try to let them buy. Well, as we see where he is right now, we actually see the back marker just dive out of the way, make sure that he's not going to have any kind of an issue entering turn one. Not everyone is going to be that generous. Every, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to fight to stay on that lead lap to where we may not end up having another caution to where there's no chance at you getting that lap back. As of right now, you know the pit cycle has not went all the way through there's still a lot of people who have not pitted but there's only 16 people right now on the lead lap as we stand uh out of the 37 competitors that started so we only got 16 people on lead lap as the you know when the leader pits and everybody goes you know gets a full cycle we're gonna see that number probably jump up to about 22 23 uh or so i think it might be a little bit higher but we'll have to see well, and right now, our leader, while he's a total of two seconds with his last lap off his fastest lap, honestly, that's not enough to, in my mind, to justify coming in. If he's having issues holding the car where he may actually end up 
needing it just for the safety of Ooh. making sure he doesn't Ooh. have an incident. Oh, Hell, there we go that around. is going to be a caution. And no, it's not. Oh, there we go. Oh, no. Nope. nope. <laughs> they are... Everybody's getting spun down to that low line to where iRacing's not going to throw it. Oh, is there it is. I'm wondering what ultimately ended up bringing it out, unless it was an admin caution. But that's going to change the dynamic of this, because... Ooh! Oh, John. yeah, that's... 81 just came through and really put a hurting on him. I think him being stopped there. Yeah, Brad Slaughter just... That was... That was a, uh, someone gotcha. I'm going to go ahead and finish you off kind of moment. He definitely finished him off there. Uh, man, and that was a hard hit for both of them. I mean, uh... It looks like the six was going to be out of it, and then next thing you know, 81 came through, and that—I mean—that's going to ruin his night. I mean, he's going to have a lot of heavy damage up front. Well, and honestly, this was one of those cautions to where I honestly think that this was probably perfectly timed for our leader. It's about the same point that we got the last caution to let everybody get the free pit stop in as, as, as we're looking right now i mean we got all these people you know the first stint was 39 laps the second one's 46 so i mean they were near the end of their pit cycle to start with here so we're gonna have to see how well it goes through for the rest of them we are about to hit the halfway mark here in a couple laps so you know, when well, you're when you're looking at this, you're looking at trying to find how can I maximize my pit strategy without having to stop too many times. Well, and I was looking into it a little earlier. These guys have five changes of tires. So we're only through two with our leaders right now. And honestly, I can say that that is probably going to make it to where... We're about halfway. These guys, if we keep on the same kind of pit cycle, we're going to actually get to see maybe some fresh tires at the very end. Somebody making that last-ditch pit in hopes of trying to make up as much time as they can. Right now, we got a, quite a few people up there in the front trying to get a wave around. So, not Carl Henderson. He's got, oh man, his rear end's all beat up from that. He got an accident earlier. Yeah, that beautiful orange singular car, which I know he, uh, just from being his teammate, he really fought. He loves the orange one, but him being a South Carolina grad did not like the idea of having that bright <laughs> orange car. But he ended up doing it. So these are all the cars right here. You have one, two, three, four, four cars that recently pitted, went a lap down, actually five cars. They're all trapped down right now. They're going to get the wave around when we go one to go here. So they'll get the go back on the lead lap. Now put us at, let's see here. We'll have to see when they go around. Looks like maybe 21, 22 right now on the lead lap. Well, and Blake Gordon is the last car on the lead lap at this point. And that was because he had to take that earlier pit stop after his bins. And that's going to end up helping him because now he's going to have that opportunity to be on the lead lap He's only in 14th at this point. Granted, he is going to have to come around some of the lapped cars. And I think it's going to be a chore to do that because the lapped cars have fresher tires than them. A lot of them just pitted re on this lap where he's got probably... Uh, he's 12 laps old. 
12 lap old tires here so it's going to be a challenging for him he's going to have to try to run through this whole entire pack whereas most of them will have fresh four set of tires well and again it's one of those gambles that you're going to have to take right now for him track position is going to be key getting himself on that lead lap is more important and I've seen Blake run as we are going green. Yep. Shane Theron gets a heck of a jump. And Randy Bichel jumps up in the second spot here. Cameron Hearn moves in the third. Hayden Pastoris in fourth. Fifth is Thomas Bressy. Sixth is Delonte Ballard. Seventh is Tyler Hensley. Eighth is Casey Shoes. Ninth is Davey Hendricks. And tenth is Eric Wineland. You see them all stretched out. Single file going through turn three right here. Well, and there, single file, pretty much back through the entire field. I had to jump back to Blake Gordon, who has the number 25 just below him. And you know, really trying to learn names and numbers, but there's 37 cars. And that, and it's new paint scheme. So you get used to custom, uh, say, one paint scheme, and next thing you know, uh, they're throwing a throwback this week. So. And I'm used to seeing Cameron Hearn uh, in his, was a Dippy's? Blippy, Blippy's car. And he's in the folder. So it throws us off up here, the thing. But we love seeing these older paint schemes, and we're getting used to it. I was going to say, that is that is the name we are capable of pronouncing. That's Chad in the 25, who's actually making a lot of moves, getting himself up a lot farther. But... Right now, Cameron Hearn is trying to put the gap back. Yeah, unfortunately, Chad's, uh, you know, after that incident that he was involved in, he is a lap down. He's got a heck of a run here. Uh, I, he's going to push Carl Henderson going on the front stretch, try to get past the 33 here. As he's going to try, but Ooh, he's going to the wall. Well, and. On the bright side, the red is not going to look too bad with the orange. Yeah, that, uh, there was synchronized uh, hitting of the wall right there. As Carl Henderson's coming up on Blake Gordon, but I, this is a tear that Chad is on to try to keep himself up on the lead lap at this point. And... Yeah, Chad's got to get by at least uh, three more cars. He's got to get up to uh, Chris, to Sean Carmody, uh, which is he's quite a few ahead of him at about three-second gap in front of him to get that lucky dog spot. But, yeah, as we go up to the front, our one and two are starting to gap third place right now to where this... That's almost a second of a gap right now. Yeah, he, he fell back a little bit on the start. I think he has older tires, and he just stayed out uh, there on that restart and uh, came out here with these guys. Uh, Thomas Bressy just passed Hayden Pastoris right there to take over the fourth spot, so he's moved up a couple spots since the restart. Delonte Ballard is moving up. Right now, Eric Wineland and Gael Brooks are still... Uh, running nose to tail of each other, both being uh, fighting hard for that uh, hard charger award. Well, and Eric needs to make up one more place to take it over, but Kyle Brooks is looking like he's going to be the one that's, he's going to put up that fight to add an extra position and take one away from Eric Wineland. Delonte Ballard's going to pass. Uh, Hayden Pastoris as they go on in one and two here. Delonte Ballard works himself up to fifth spot. Hayden Pastoris drops out of the top five and sitting in sixth spot now. And honestly, it's still a great run for him. He's up 10 positions, so none of this is anything to scoff at. He has just been opportunistic tonight getting himself up farther and farther in this pack and showing a lot of skill in the process. Yeah, 
Right now we're looking for the battles on the track, and this kind of looks like the best battle that we got around here. These four four cars coming together here. There are actually and five cars. Actually, Kyle Brooks, if we go back there, he is on a charge, looking to get himself down below Eric Weinland, and gets that low, Ooh, comes up a little bit to where that was a yeah. little bit sketchy, but again, it it's the right move to make in this situation. I'm never a fan of trying to pass going in one and two. I mean, it, it's such a slingshot right there. Uh, maybe you can clear somebody going in one, two, but to start your pass going in one, two, I mean, it, it, you're both being shot out of a cannon basically oh, and slingshot. That was a great attempt at a block there by Eric Weinland, but he just had such Kyle Burks had such a great run out of four. That was that was futile yeah. trying to stop him. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if he was blocking or if he was going to give him the room there. And uh, the 71 decided to drop down low and off the corner to make the run. It, it looked too easy of a pass right there. I think uh, Eric Weinland might have gave him the, the lane going in, going down the front straight away there. Well, I like to believe that everybody's racing really hard. <laughs> Every so often, you know, you got a competitor that shows their shows their face, and uh, you're like, okay, you're definitely going to have a run on me more more often than not. Here, man, have it. I don't want to do something dumb, trying to defend you, slap the wall, ruin my night. Here's a position. Have a great day. The next guy behind me. The one that, that was in the picture was a lap down, and I think the one behind him was a lap down as well. So there was no, you know, thing of him getting freight trained. You give up one spot, and that's it. Well, and it's even more than that. It's why ruin your equipment, burn through your tires trying to defend the position when we've had a lot of good, long runs tonight. So it's just not worth it screwing yourself later in the run just to try to hold on to that position now. Yeah. Oh, the Aiden Pastoris gets a little out of whack. Davey Hendricks will take over that spot. The number 44 of Tyler Hensley. He was set there and try to take over that. Trying to take up some space right there. Get close to the back bumper. And the four Casey Shoes looking down low as well. But right now, it definitely is looking like Tyler Hensley and Casey Shu may be held up right now by Hayden Storis. And they want to get this move done to where they can take the fight to Davy Hendricks. Yeah, Davy Hendricks has already. As caution caught. is out. Lap 101, Zach Edwards. <laughs> Smacks the wall coming out of turn two and it hits the infield. Oh, Blake Gordon. Ooh, that, there, there was a code brown right there for Blake Gordon. The, the Taco Bell code brown. Code brown. <laughs> oh, we're going to have to see how close that actually was for him. I was going to say, that's that's the perfect moment for an in-car. Let's do a blimp view. We got some time here. Uh, pretty long cautions here at Darlington. Ooh. Well, there were there were a few cars there that got themselves a little bit scared. Let's go on the end car of Blake. If I can find his end car, there we go. There he is. <laughs> oh, those reactions right there that is just yeah that that one's gonna scare you as we're starting to see everybody going ahead making that trip into the pits this may not necessarily be for tires but it looks like everybody is just from the timing and scoring everybody's about 15 seconds for their pit stop which means 
They're grabbing all four right now. And in my mind, that's probably the right move. Gael Brooks, it looks like he stayed out an extra lap there. Maybe just to get some uh, points there. Get that, comes get that lap lead point that he... Honestly, that's <laughs> that's the best idea. Pasta Man commented and said, uh, Blake said, watch his end car. <laughs> we did. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely had a, a Code Brown situation there. And hopefully it didn't have Taco Bell involved because then it'd be extra messy. Where do you think the Taco Bell comes from? <laughs> oh, they're never going to hire us or sponsor us. <laughs> None of that yum foods group. There were no KFC, which I'm a Popeye's guy myself, so I'm fine with that. I, I, could, I could do Popeye's chicken sandwich. I really don't like their chicken. Uh, I, but I, I really don't like any of their sides. Um, not a oh, person on their fries. I don't, the one by me, uh, uh, they don't know how to cook them right to make them Cajun fries. Uh, they sound, they just, they just taste weird. And uh, so, my my combo between two chicken joints will be uh, Popeye's chicken sandwich and Chick Fil A waffle fries. Yeah, I, I still don't understand the obsession with Chick-fil-A. I don't think I, it's I, that I don't, good. I don't like their chicken sandwiches. I like their waffle fries. I'll give you that. The only problem is they don't have, like, nacho cheese sauce to dip them in. But that's just me because deep down inside I'm a fat kid. <laughs> All right, the pace car light is off. We're at 107 laps. When they go green, we'll be at 108 laps. We'll be just shy of uh, it's about 85, 85 laps, 75 laps. There you go, 75 laps. I'm trying to do my horrible North Carolina math here. I was gonna let you handle that because I'd make a fool of myself. I as made well. it. I made fool of ourselves uh, for us. But we are well over halfway at this point, and much of the field is actually over half of their tire allotment, which is why I'm somewhat surprised to see as many people take all four tires in that process to where it looks like Guile Brooks as we go green. Yeah, he gets a great jump there. Uh, Thomas Bressy is going to fall in third here. Fourth will be uh, Randy Mitchell. Fifth is Delonte Ballard. Sixth will be David Hendricks. Seventh is Tyler Hensley. Eighth is Joe Densmore. Ninth is Blake Gordon. And tenth is Eric Wineland. Uh, Blake Gordon's going to get past Joe Densmore going down the back stretch there. Uh, Joe pulled over, let him go. And that's probably the right move because, again, Blake is especially after that last incident he is wanting to get himself around some of these guys get himself into a position that he may not have to deal with those kind of things again and is just going to start making the charge to get himself where he was before he tapped the wall earlier in the race yeah i mean uh after that last restart that we had prior to the last caution uh he had to start at the very back because he got the wave around uh, he was on 12, 12 lap older tires, and he had to drive through the entire field. That means the lap cars and uh, everybody through it. This time on this restart, he was able to go get in four fresh tires. He's on the same tire strategy as everybody else right now. And he doesn't have to pass all these lap cars. He gets to jump ahead of all the lap cars here, which there are now 18 people on the lead lap after that last caution. Well, and as we say that, the fastest lap of the race was just set by our leader at a 30.13 to where that is by far it's a tenth of a second faster than anyone else has run tonight yeah he, he's out there putting on a clinic I, I don't know what Cameron Hearn or Thomas Bressy will have to do to actually 
get to his back bumper to make a move. But right now, nobody can actually get to his back bumper. So uh, he's already pulled out a, almost a six-tenth gap over the first place. Well, and we're only, what, three laps into this run after the caution? And he is, yeah, you said it. He is putting on an absolute clinic tonight on how to run Darlington. Yeah, I, I, I need to go have him teach me how to run the cup cars here tomorrow night uh, in the IBRL series. I, I'm going to be running it, and uh, I need this man to give me pointers. <laughs> and the problem is, is I'm going to guarantee iRacing has it to where these two cars do not act the same. No, they do not. any they, way, shape, or form. Uh, the, the cup cars and the trucks for the most part act a, act very similar just very noticeable difference in horsepower xfinity is a car of its own and honestly i will be the first to say i like it a whole lot more than the cup car i wish they i racing defaults were a little bit on uh, on the looser side for the setups if they, they had them i, I did a year-long one last year in the ivrl series and they just tighten up way too quickly and the whole entire run. I haven't run them hardly any this year. Maybe, you know, they've changed them around, but that's my only uh, complaint with them. I've only run them because of this league as we're starting to see. Ooh, Sean Carmody gets in the side of the 19 there. Gets up into the wall. They get it back into each other. And... That one is going to probably create just a little bit of animosity, but everybody holds on to it, keeps it on the track, and we don't have another quick caution because of that. Yeah, Sean Carmody is just trying to fight to stay in that lucky dog spot because uh, Boomer Logan is coming for him. So. He's doing whatever he can to distance himself from Boomer Logan to stay in that lucky dog spot. So he was racing Danny Ware just a little bit too hard for it. Uh, uh, that's what it is because Danny Ware is uh, sitting in 19th foot on the lead lap and Sean Carmody is in 20th one lap down. Well, and we're starting to reach that point in the race that you really have to start worrying about where you are positioned on the track. Because if we get a late caution, every single one of those positions, because we'll pull the field back together, as, of course, you go to what is looking to be a great battle between Randy Bechtel and Tom Sparesi for third. Yeah, I went up there and looked. Uh, Cameron Hearn kind of dropped the lead a little bit. He cut it down. He was around seven tenths and dropped it down to five tenths. So I want to see what it looked like. And I saw the battle behind him brewing here uh, between Thomas and Randy here. And <laughs> it looks like Randy was sideways coming off that last corner right there. Loose is fast. And you don't want to be too loose here, though. You'll start burning up your tires a little bit too soon. And really early in the run for them to kind of push the car too hard. Well, it was, if you had a keen eye last week with Pocono, a lot of people were sending that back end around coming out of just about every turn. And trust me, that was the only way to get your speed. Oh, that's a huge momentum base track. You have to keep up all the speed that you can at Pocono, and, and you got to keep in that draft. I mean, those are your only two benefits to be able to make you make and keep your spots uh, is, is to keep up that speed. You got to do whatever you can there. Well, I would actually argue that this is another one of those tracks, maybe not to the same extent, but if you do not get with the length of the straightaways here, if you don't have that good run coming out of the turn, you're going to be in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, 
Uh, on the other hand, you know, your competitor sees you not have a really good exit there. They might push too hard instead of running the normal line, which is their fast line, and uh, do something that they're not supposed to and uh, slide the ta tail end out a little bit too far. But again, we're talking racing here. We're talking some of the best, most competitive racers that I've ever been around, top to bottom. And yeah, they may take advantage of you making that kind of a mistake, but at the same time, you kind of have to put yourself in that position to be able to do it as our leader is already hitting some lap traffic. Yeah, he got around the 55 there. He drops down below. A lot of, a lot of people go ahead and pass him. He does, you know, have a lot of respect for the leaders and uh, their battles doesn't want to get in their way. Well, and right now we're just going to start to see just about everybody having to do the make those kinds of moves because Cameron Hearn is having to make it as ooh, you keep jumping back to some good battles here. Yeah, right now we have a good good little battle between Delonte Ballard, Davey Hendricks, the 44 of Tyler Hensley, and Bright, uh, Blake Gordon in the 13th. They are, they are the tightest battle group here. Uh, Randy Bechtel keeps keeps at about a one-tenth of a gap between Cameron Hearn. He just can't get past him. So we're going to look and try and see if any of these guys are going to pass each other here as they, they come up on them. Well, and the big thing is right now, lap 125 of 82. We still have a little ways, but if you aren't going to make up the time now, we probably got one more pit stop if we stay green. As Davy Hendricks is right there. Yeah, and they're coming up on uh, Randy Bechtel and Cameron Hurt uh, and Thomas Bressy up there. So, you know, those have to kind of watch out. The, the battle between Cameron, or actually, sorry, Randy and Thomas Bressy is over. Randy was able to get by him. Carl Henderson and Chad 